Designing a tiny house that will perfectly meet the needs of a family of four is no light task, yet that is exactly what this next couple have done, building a beautiful farmhouse style tiny home that is packed with great design ideas. G'day, Emma, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Hey, Joel, hey, nice Bryce. to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is such a beautiful looking home Thank you, you have. Thank you so much. And before we talk about the house, can we just talk about your house? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, we can't take all the credit for it, yeah. but um, it's a beautiful place. And that was one of the big keys of bringing the, the tiny house here was the location. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got two young girls. Yeah. And this is literally a playground here, isn't it? It Absolutely. is. You know what? They are perfectly set up for everything that they could ever want or need. And I think that's what made the transition from living in a normal sized mm -hmm. house to living small so easy and mm -hmm. so seamless yeah. for the girls and for us, actually. Yeah. And that's the key. I mean, now they're outdoors most of the time. And that was one of the big goals of it. And it's working out very well. And we're just so, so happy mm -hmm. to be here. You've even got a stock tank swimming pool with floating swan. That, that's course. borderline ridiculous. It isn't is. It? Honestly, we were talking about it, and I'm like, that's one of the things that if we build a big enough deck, we 100% wanted to do. You know, the Pinterest stock tank pool with the swan included. Emma wanted a bigger one. Actually. Yeah, I want, this is this is like a six foot one, but we wanted it even larger. No, one I mean a bigger either. swan. You wanted oh, a bigger wanted, swan. Yes, yes, that too. That too. Exactly. That might yeah. that might come. Having such an incredible outdoor space like this must just make tiny house living so much easier. Oh, one hundred percent. Honestly, like this deck it's makes vital. the biggest yeah. difference, and we are always outside, and we probably will be in you know spring, summer, fall. Yeah. The only time we might not be able to utilize it is winter, right? If it's snowy, but it has just made the world of difference. Yeah. That's when you just need to chuck a heater in the pool. That's actually <laughs> That's the next plan. That's we've actually already looked into doing that, and turning into a stock tank hot tub. And yeah, totally. We should do it. Yeah. And what is the story with this land here? Because the setup is just ridiculously perfect. You've got sheep running around in the background, and a fantastic space here. So Joel and I recently sold a home that we had designed and built ourselves, mm -hmm. and we purchased property, which we had dreamed of purchasing, six acres. We were able to clear it, um, and we were in the process of building um, another house, but we weren't able to put the tiny house on our piece of land. Because our land isn't, like it's never been built on, it's yeah, never, it's we, we have remote, so yeah. much to still do on the property to make it livable. Like it would have been a little bit of a headache trying to prep mm. the spot for the tiny house and have electricity and everything that we need. So that's kind of where we went. Just five minutes up the road mm -hmm. is where my parents live and this is where we have parked the tiny house. They have five acres of their mm -hmm. own. Clearly they are already completely set up with trampolines, mm. sandboxes for the kids so really in the end I think it turned out beautifully for our family and it's your childhood home this is where you grew yeah, up and this is where I grew up and honestly it holds so many memories of the kids being outside and that's mm. part of the reason why we moved to a tiny yeah. house was to be outside have more family time mm. and now we're close to family which is the best you of couldn't both get worlds. any closer yeah so I think our situation is maybe a little bit different than your typical tiny house, maybe family or individuals, is that we were looking at this for a certain period of time. So Joel and I are so fortunate enough to be able to build another house. And we were looking to see what would be the best fit for that kind of in-between time. Um, as soon as we saw the tiny house, we thought, you know what, this is a great opportunity to show our girls what it's like to live small, mm -hmm. live simply, and not focus so much on the big houses. You know, a lot of stuff, a lot of clutter, and, and maybe just focusing down on what's truly important. And mm -hmm. that, that ultimately boils down to family. For myself as an airline pilot, as a career, it was very important for me, uh, especially that when I'm away, I know that Emma and the girls are safe and have that feeling of safety and security here. Definitely. And, uh, mm -hmm. That was what really was really great about us being able to put the tiny house in our parents' property. So what was it that inspired the build of the tiny house? 
I remember seeing the first tiny house on HDTV and I remember thinking like I would love to get the chance to design a space that not only had the constraints of small living but something that would still feel like a home even though it is so you know much smaller than the conventional home. Mm -hmm. So when I first saw that I remember kind of slowly putting the idea into Joel's head and this was even before we had children so it was mm -hmm. kind of like should we do it as a young couple or should we try to you know work our way up in the property ladder but once we found out that we were gonna go for it I was like 100% we're doing a farmhouse farm house. right we're gonna put it in the country it's yeah. gonna be a farmhouse yeah I feel like a farmhouse to us, especially in Canada, like almost symbolizes like the cozy home, the, mm -hmm. you know, the homestead where you yeah. grow your own garden. And that's why we tried to incorporate kind of mature window boxes and, yeah. and little gardens to try and make it feel like it was an established farmhouse. Mm -hmm. You've definitely nailed that really quintessentially beautiful farmhouse look in this. Oh, thank you. Can you talk to me about the construction and some of the materials that we used? The house is constructed out of uh, two by four, and then it's uh, cedar clad in the exterior as well. Standard house windows, and so it's very insulated as well. The tin roof mm -hmm. and uh, spray foam insulated. So, I mean, you could heat this thing with a candle, essentially. It's so, so well insulated. Mm -hmm. We barely ever use the heating. And what size is the tiny house? It's, so it's 30 feet long. Uh, eight and a half wide, 13 and a half high. We wanted to actually do it a bit longer, but it's a bit of a tricky driveway to get it up here. So the builders, they recommended 30 feet to be the longest and actually we're frankly quite glad that oh, we I'm, did. I'm so glad we didn't go bigger because I feel like when you're going for a tiny house, yeah. you can still try to downsize your living yeah. and make living more simple, I think. Oh, and, but yeah. for us, initially, it was, it's such a, such a new thing to us that we well, might as well Completely. go as big as we can, right? Go as big, it's less of a transition, but you know what, two feet or whatnot, you know, this is this is perfect, you know, mm -hmm. and every week that we live in it, the house feels bigger. Yeah. I, I thought about the other night, I thought, look at this place is big. <laughs> this is it's a too palace. much. Space. We don't even use that <laughs> corner, you know? It's, yeah, exactly. We still got wasted space. Yeah. And I still lose things, and Emma still tells me that. It's yeah. ridiculous. I lose <laughs> things all just, the time, even though we've gone from like It's a tiny <laughs> house, yeah. and I lose things all the time, yeah. and maybe that'll never change. But. Yeah. That's the way it goes, unfortunately. <laughs> well, the home just looks so wonderful from the outside, and I cannot wait to see what you've done on the inside. Come on in. Let's take a look. Thank you. <laughs> oh, this is just beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, you know what? It feels so cozy and mm -hmm. so nice. I just, I, I honestly love how it turned out. I feel like we had a vision of what we wanted it to mm -hmm. look like and I feel like it even just exceeded that. Yeah, and it's felt like home since the day we moved in here. Mm -hmm. It's felt Completely. incredibly homey, so we love it. Through and through, you have just nailed that farmhouse vibe right down to freshly baked cookies. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Yes. Yeah, totally. You know, like I just, like I said before, the whole farmhouse vibe just automatically feels cozy and mm -hmm. homey to us. So we were trying to implement like the hutch because mm -hmm. you always see an old hutch in the farmhouses mm -hmm. and, you know, having things like the galvanized playing and, you know, the dishes and everything. Yeah, I think the farmhouse is that place where you come home for a nice home cooked meal and somewhere where it's not extravagant, but it's homey and, and beautiful in its own right. And that's kind of what I think Emma's done a really good job of, of capturing that here. She certainly has. And you're immediately greeted by this wonderful little dining <laughs> space as well. Yeah. And definitely carries through that very mm. homey feel. So yeah. That, that was one of the things. So there's a list that Joel and I drew up for the things that we wanted to have in a tiny house mm -hmm. as a family of four. Mm -hmm. So one of them was a big enough kitchen so that the girls could actually come and mm -hmm. cook and yeah. not feel like they had to get out of my space when I'm in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then another one was having a decent sized table that we could pull out mm -hmm. so that we still have family meals because yeah. I don't want us to, you know, live small and not forget why we did this in the first yeah, place. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Which is really the quality time, having time with family and not having so much stuff and things to do, but focusing on our girls. And then a kitchen that looks like it is just begging to be cooked. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Complete with the bread box, right? Right. And you can tell we are parents of young children, so we have two different methods of coffee making. Plenty of caffeine to keep <laughs> we, us going. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. very important. So ideally, we are going to extend this countertop out so that we can put bar stools for the girls. But right now, as it is, yes, we have the biggest fridge that we could fit in a mm -hmm. tiny house. But honestly, that was, I think, another one on the list is we needed to have 
we're a family of four. We have a lot of groceries. Yeah. The girls eat infinite amount of snacks. So we needed to have yeah. a bigger fridge for that. Bigger fridge and a full size range mm -hmm. for, for the cooking. And a big sink because we end up with a lot of dishes, of course, as well. Right. We so many meals. Mm -hmm. so. Building a tiny house for a family is a totally different ball game. You have to consider so many different yeah. aspects, you know, the children washing their hands and, you know, spilling over. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you are just designing it for maybe a single person or a couple, you don't have to consider as many Quite variables, as many things, I don't yeah. think. Yeah. We could have done it with a much smaller fridge. Oh, completely. Uh, you yeah. know, things like that. And, mm -hmm. But, you know, this, this gives us the, the, the convenience of a, of a bigger home and a bigger kitchen. And it actually mm -hmm. feels very big to us. Because yeah. honestly, as a family of four, there's like endless dishes and laundry. Cooking and, and yeah. you know, I have, to, I have to keep on top of those things, I think. So having the double sinks, perfect. Yeah. Now in this part of the house as well, the sense of space is quite grand. And I think that's because you've got this wonderful vaulted ceiling in here, just adding so Completely. much height. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was something that we had to decide as you'll see later on, we've got the girls have each got their own sleeping space. They've got their own lofts. And initially we thought, well, where are we going to sleep? We need our own loft as well. And we initially had planned to put in a loft in here, but as we started to look into it more in the 3d uh, diagrams of it, it just, Really felt it closed it, it in made quite it feel a bit. Cramped, made it feel, it? yeah, made it feel quite mm -hmm. a bit smaller. But now, as you walk in, as you can see, I mean, you're quite a tall guy, and it still feels it's a good amount of space. Mm -hmm. So, without including a sleeping loft for both of you, where do you sleep? That's the secret. <laughs> yeah. That is the number one question we get asked by family and friends. So initially, we were going to have a bedroom upstairs, but we decided to do the pull-out pull couch, couch. <laughs> which is totally romantic, but honestly, and it's incredibly comfortable, actually. Yeah. We've, Completely gotten used to it and it's a good size and we love it. I am so surprised by how romantic, how cozy it uh -huh. is and how private it feels even yeah. though we have the girls lofts just right up mm -hmm. that stairs. Yeah, we love it. I mean, it. life with toddlers is never very private anyway. They want to mm -hmm. be wherever you are. But to us, no, it feels like our space when the girls are in bed, they're in bed early enough and we've got our own space down here and mm -hmm. we love it. And another great advantage of doing it that way is you have this phenomenal sized family couch now. Definitely. So this was um, another one on the list that we absolutely wanted to have as a family. We wanted a big enough couch to have a good sized bed for us, but we also wanted the couch to function as, you know, a big couch for all of our families. For the so, family of four, they all fit on here and exactly. it feels like a good sized living room. So we read books on here, um, you know, the girls do their little doodling and Joel and I are right here with them. Mm -hmm. So it just feels like a good Good, almost like a conventional living space that you'd have in a normal house. And talk to me about the storage in here. Yeah, so there was a lot of options for us uh, when having the house built and what kind of storage options we wanted. There was a few that were, for us, quite obvious. The staircase is the perfect scenario. I mean, mm -hmm. it's wasted space otherwise. But we weren't quite sure how the living situations would really work until we were fully into it. So we thought a lot of that we've been adding on later on. For example, these cupboards here, mm -hmm. they act as our, this is my side, <laughs> the clothing storage. <laughs> Don't look Not at that. Not very glamorous. <laughs> um, and we've each got our own and then size. And sides over here. Yeah, yeah, Emma's sides over here. We've got mm -hmm. um, uh, things for the kids over here. We've got toys and um, games, everything for them. It all works out perfectly and they just love it. We've also got these cupboards, shelves in here. We've got baskets for their paints and their Play-Doh and everything. And they can just go up, grab a basket, put it on the table and away they go and it works absolutely perfectly. And then I noticed you've got a hook here sticking out of the ceiling. What's that doing there? We do. So this is one of the girls' favorite things about this space right here is we actually have a swing that hooks up for the girls. The seat is wide enough for both of them to sit on and read books and they actually can get quite a height in the swing. Mm. That was one of the things that I remember seeing in a tiny house years and mm. years ago. Not the exact swing that we have, but I remember seeing how fun it looked for the kids and just something a little fun for them. And then through there is the bathroom. It is. Right. So right over here we have um, the pocket door and obviously it provides a lot of privacy for us. Um, it just slides in really easily. And then it looks like you've managed to fit in a great sized bathroom. Yeah. So we were able to um, design a space that was perfect for not only us as a couple, but also for our girls. So mm -hmm. the big washer dryer is totally essential mm -hmm. for a family of four. We're constantly doing laundry. And the other thing was a full size tub is was totally necessary. We do the, the kids have a bath every night almost. And for us, it was just the two of us. We may not have needed it, but we figured it was pretty essential for the kids to have a full size tub and it fits in here perfectly. It doesn't even mm -hmm. feel too crammed or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I think another good thing about this washroom is the amount of storage space. Mm -hmm. So we have like a good size sink and vanity where mm -hmm. we can store all the toothbrushes. We have all this, this organization on the side where Joel is and obviously good hanging for towels and mm -hmm. whatnot. And I see you've got the composting toilet here. We yeah, do. we're kind of partially off-grid and partially on-grid, but we're not on any septic field or anything. So we've got the composting toilet because it just makes things so convenient with where we are. We didn't have to design a septic field or anything, uh, which is very costly, of course, and much more of a permanent thing. And this has worked out very well for us. We'd never even, even heard of it before we designed the tiny house mm -hmm. and had that built, and we love it. It's been great. Fantastic. And then upstairs, we've got the kids' bedrooms. We do, which is actually my favorite part of the house. Let's go. Let's check it out. So obviously one of my favorite spaces is the lofts, but this little reading area, I just absolutely love how the kids can just run up there, grab a book, and then either go up into their lofts mm -hmm. or come back down to the couch area. Yeah, they may be a little bit, they're total bookworms. Mm -hmm. They just love Completely. their books. That's, that's one thing we didn't really sacrifice in a tiny house is mm -hmm. we wanted to keep all of their books. So we had to kind of fit some in the stairs, some in this little storage, and then obviously upstairs. I will upstairs. correct you there. You did make me sacrifice my books. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> what, did what did you have to let go there's of? No, there's no space for espionage books, history books, or airplane <laughs> oh books. No, 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 no space No, war heroes, none of that. None of that. I don't sense at least a hint of... No, 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 no animosity nothing, at all. No, no, no nothing at all. No, no resentment. No, no resentment no. there at all. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about what you've done here as well is it creates this really special little zone where you know that you're about to enter the child space. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we were trying to figure out, do we get hanging storage? That was one of the things that mm -hmm. we're kind of lacking. Or do we make it that as soon as you go up the staircase, you're kind of entering the like kids zone, yeah. you know? And can we take a look at the rooms upstairs? Of course you can. Come on up. Thank you. This is absolutely adorable. <laughs> so this is one of the coziest spaces I think in the whole house. And we actually, even though the ceilings are lower, it is a place that we spend a lot of time in. So the girls and I and Joel, we, we always take turns reading books up here. And we wanted Isla to have a really big mattress and a big bed so that we could actually all fit up here together. That's so nice. Lots of storage built in up here as well. Yeah, there's tons of storage. We actually have four wicker baskets. So two of them are for toy storage and then two of them are for the clothes. So the only kind of hanging storage that we have is the little hook that you see when you're going up the stairs. And then the rest is just folding. So the girls don't need a lot of clothes. They just need the staple outfits that they wear, you know, throughout the week. So they have them in two baskets right there. And then we have Ivy's room over the other side. We do. Can we take a look at that one? Oh, of course. This is just so sweet. I can't believe that you've actually managed to fit a crib up in here. We have. So one of the big things was um, our littlest is still in a crib and she's probably going to be in a crib for another year. So we absolutely had to fit a crib in the space. Eventually, I think we're going to convert it into a swinging door because right now we're kind of lifting her up and kind of swooping her into the space. But for right now, she thinks it's super cozy and she loves it. Great. And it's cool that you've managed to put some doors in up here as well. Yeah, so this was something that was a, kind of an essential element of the nursery that we wanted is because our little one is still waking up at night and we didn't want that sound to travel over to our older daughter who pretty much sleeps pretty soundly. So uh, we did a bifold door on here, which is just super easy. It, it latches and unlatches and the sound to travel is at a minimum. Fantastic. And this is a nursing chair that I'm sitting on right now, it, is it? It is, it is. And you know what? You fit perfectly in that chair. I, th I think I do. I think I do. I might be, I might consider moving in here. <laughs> yeah, I know. No problem. No problem at all. We'll just shift this one over there and you can live in here perfectly. Great. So you've been living in the tiny house now for six weeks. How are you adapting to family life living tiny? I think it's been surprisingly quick. Actually, we thought it would take quite a bit longer, but... It was the first night and the kids were, this is home, and they thought it was just the, the coolest thing ever and mm -hmm. they still love it. Our oldest tells us all the time how much she loves our tiny house and she corrects me if I call it uh, a, a small house, a small house mm -hmm. or a mini house. No, 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 no. It's, it's a, a tiny, tiny house. house. <laughs> yeah. and, and to her, she, she just takes so much pride in her loft and her area. and Which makes us so happy yeah. because I feel like we've made a really good choice for our family. Yeah, absolutely. 
So I think this home signifies a slower pace of life. Mm -hmm. Ever since we had the girls, it was like, okay, you got to go, go, go. You know, we did a renovation on a house and then we built a house and then we bought this acreage. And it just seems mm -hmm. like we were a family that we love doing things, but not necessarily the best when you have young children. You need to be present and mm -hmm. you need to take the time to focus on just the memories, I think. In the simplicity of it, you mm -hmm. know, it, it's so much more simple. We have, we have all these little notes like love grows best in tiny houses and the front mat is that too. And it may seem a little cheesy when you're talking about it or, or not authentic, but it truly is. Is I, I find like when we were in such a big home, everybody mm -hmm. kind of just went to their own spaces mm -hmm. and you kind of were calling to see where the girls were and, and whatnot, but just being able to communicate and everybody still having their own spaces, but being together as a family. So this has brought us together, mm -hmm. simplified life. So I think that it, will, it, it won't just end, it will always be a part of our lives. Mm -hmm. And what was your budget for building this tiny house? So in the end, uh, all in, it cost us $119,000 Canadian dollars after tax. But that included things like the nature's head toilet, the gray water filtration, all appliances, delivery set up, and as I said, taxes. So before that, it was $106,000 before tax. Well, I really can see why you've both just absolutely fallen in love with this home. It is such a beautiful space that you've created for your family. Thank you so much for Thank sharing it with so me. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks Thank for coming, you. Bryce. The design of this tiny house really is so lovely. Joel and Emma set out to create a wonderful farmhouse style tiny house for their family. And that is exactly what they've done. Even better than that though, they've created a space that really brings their family together, which teaches them lessons about what's really important in life. And there is no greater gift that you can give your children than that.